Hello everyone, Victor is here, your guide to all things organic chemistry, and in this video I want to talk about this reaction. So what I have on the left is an alkene, while for my reagent I have HBr over here, which is going to be a strong acid. And this is a type of a strong acid which we normally abbreviate as something like HX. So the most likely reaction that we are going to be seeing here is the electrophilic addition to our alkene, namely that's going to be hydrohalogenation of some sort. So let's break it down step by step and see what we're going to get. The first step in the hydrohalogenation of alkenes is going to be the electrophilic attack from our HBr onto our double bond, which going to produce the following carbocation. And as we know, the stability of carbocation goes in the row from the tertiary carbocation, which is going to be more stable than a secondary carbocation, which in turn is going to be more stable than the primary carbocation. So this one is a tertiary carbocation, and we are not going to expect any kind of rearrangements in this case, or are we? As a matter of fact, there will be a rearrangement here. We know that a carbocation is going to rearrange if we are going to be able to make a more stable carbocation. But this one is already tertiary. How can it be more stable than a tertiary? There is no resonance here or anything else. So what can happen here to make this carbocation more stable? Well, let me number my ring here real quick and we'll see what we can come up with. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I have a seven-membered ring, and we know that the seven-membered ring is not the most stable ring system. The most stable ring is typically going to be a six-membered ring. So what if somehow this ring is going to undergo a contraction, and it's going to give me a six-membered ring with a tertiary carbocation? that would actually be more stable than a seven-membered ring with a tertiary carbocation. And we can actually accomplish it by taking electrons between carbons one and seven and moving those electrons towards carbon number two. So let me draw it ugly first. I'm going to have a six-membered ring over here like that with my atoms two, three, four, five, six, and seven over here. Now, carbon number two has a methyl group on it, so I'm going to show it like that. We are also seeing carbon number one that is connected to my carbon number two, and I'm going to have two methyl groups sitting on that carbon as well. Now, since I used electrons between carbons one and seven to make a bond between seven and two, my carbon number one is going to have a carbocation now. And what we are seeing here is now we actually have a six-membered ring right over here like that. And we have a tertiary carbocation. So this is still a tertiary carbocation, which from the carbocation stability is as stable as what we had before. But now due to this alkyl shift, we have shrunk our ring. We have done the ring contraction. And now actually we have a more stable ring overall, which means that I've made a more stable carbocation. And if I could make a more stable carbocation, it means that I had a uh, driving force for this reaction. Now, let me redraw this molecule a a little bit better. So I have my six-membered ring, my carbocation on this side, and everything looks pretty. Now, this is the most stable carbocation that we can think about. So the last step that we have in this reaction is going to be the nucleophilic attack from our Br-. So Br- is going to come in, perform the nucleophilic attack on our carbocation, giving me the final product that looks like this. So what did you think about this reaction? Have you ever seen a ring contraction before? Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you learned something new today, click the like button to help promote this video so more students can see it, share this video with your friends and classmates, subscribe to the channel for daily organic chemistry updates, watch this video next, and I will see you tomorrow.